What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, CBS Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Tuesday, May 18th, and we are diving into our division by division resets. The goal here is to take a look at every single division around the NFL to kind of peek at what teams' win totals are now that the schedule is out, look at their odds to win, maybe try and figure out if there's some values out there as we head uh, into the dregs of the offseason and uh, and just to sort of you know like get a get a bigger picture view of of those teams coming up on this one the AFC West reset up next or later the AFC South reset and of course you plenty have plenty of mailbags in your feed feed bags if you will make sure and check out those mailbags they're fun they're entertaining we did a two part mailbag joining me now to talk about the AFC West Cody Benjamin what's up buddy doing well thanks for having me on will and i i really appreciate the feed bag uh term there i think we should I think we should oh, put that into the bag. strap it on and get to work man you gotta do yeah. it that's how, that's how we do it on in the farm it is uh down south which is also where this week's pga championship is taking place that's right keel what time first cut as your podcast need covered for golf second major join rick gaiman kyle porter and mark Gaiman live every single day for the 2021 pga championship at kiowa islands famed ocean course just outside Charleston, South Carolina, from DFS previews to worthwhile wagers and even round-by-round recaps, The First Cut has it. Find The First Cut on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and even live on YouTube. Good, Great great show, That First Cut. They've been killing it. I think they had Cage Lee winning at some point over the weekend, which is wild because it, it, the lowest he got was like 66-1 to 1 before the weekend. Anyway, like I said, we're going to look at all these teams, break it down, and you can go read Cody's story Looking at the AFC West from that perspective on CBSSports.com, we will, you know, this, the AFC West is pretty straightforward. I mean, the Chiefs are minus 280 to win the division right now, William Hill. The Broncos are just under five to one, but there's a reason for that. And we'll get to it in a minute. The Chargers six to one and the Raiders 18 to one. We start with Las Vegas because we're going to go in reverse order of those division odds. The Raiders win total seven and a half, the under minus 130. Their odds to win the AFC 35 to one, and their odds to win the Super Bowl 70 to one. Cody, is there, you know, when you look at their best free agent additions, their best draft additions, what does anything stand out to you in, in the sense that maybe there's some value on the Raiders here? I, I have a hard time finding it. No, I, I mean, I'm with you on this one. I, I would echo a, kind of the disappointment, I think, a little bit in, in what Vegas is right now. Um, you know, we're, we're slowly working our way, you know, through this 10-year John Gruden contract, and um, the results just haven't been there. I mean, the, the draft capital has been there. They've had their chances to swing. You know, they've traded, got, you know, Khalil Mack, you go back to that deal, you go back to things like this where they're collecting assets. They're just not doing anything with them, and so – you look at their offseason additions this year, you know, they've gotten criticized all over the board for the draft, you know, Alex Leatherwood reaching for him. Uh, but even beyond the draft, I mean, you look at the free agent additions, you know, individually, I don't mind a Kenyon Drake. I don't mind a John Brown, but they're, they're not exactly um, upgrading their team. I mean, if you look at like John Brown, I think the best case scenario for somebody like him is basically what Nelson Aguilar was last year. Um, you look at, you know, Kenyon Drake, you've already got a workhorse in Josh Jacobs. I just think they shuffled the offensive line for no real good reason. Um, I think that the, they've kind of hit their ceiling with this current structure with Derek Carr as the mm-hmm. quarterback with, it really feels like this could be the year where we finally tip towards, um, our, an actual reset, maybe whether it's at quarterback, uh, whether it's at other positions across the roster. So no, I, I'm not buying into the Raiders. I think the value is where it should be. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with Las Vegas, especially because, as we mentioned, Denver is so high. I think I think the three, if the Broncos trade for Aaron Rodgers and they're the prohibitive favorite to trade for him if he is traded, then the Raiders are by far and away the worst team in this division, and it's not remotely close. So I wouldn't mess with them at all from that perspective. And I, I don't, I don't want to turn, I don't like to turn this show into a Raiders bashing the Raiders because people think we do that too often. It's just hard to look at this team and and figure out exactly, you know, what they're doing. As you point out, if you you know if you sign Kenyon Drake on the cheap and free agency, and he's your starting running back, great. But if you use a first round pick on Josh Jacobs and then sign Kenyon Drake, it it makes you wonder what's going on here. The Alex Leatherwood pick, 
you know, when you, if, as Ryan Wilson likes to point out, if you flip him and Trayvon Morrig, it's fine. And people don't worry about Leatherwood going to the first, but they had a good offensive line and, and now they've kind of blown it up. And you can look at this line and think that it's going to be good. It's just hard to imagine this offense being elite. John Brown is sort of the same as Henry Ruggs and sort of you know, was the deep threat that Nelson Aguilar was and was the deep threat that Tyrone Williams is supposed to be. It, there's just not a lot to love here unless the defense can magically take a step forward. So I'm, I'm with you. I think it's a hard pass on everything futures related, unless you want to take the under on their win total. But even then seven and a half is, you know, that's just not many games in a 17 game schedule. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think, um, Again, those individual additions, they're fine, but just in the context of what the Raiders are doing, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I mean, Yannick Ngakwe, I mean, that's good. I mean, he'll, he'll upgrade the pass rush, but you've got um, you've got other pieces there on defense that have question marks. You talked about drafting Mora at safety. I mean, they also spent like three other picks on safety. John, Jonathan I mean, Abrams, a first-round pick on a safety two years ago. I mean, what are we doing? Yeah, so it's just it's a lot of movement, just not a lot of upgrading, it seems. Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, Mariota's still there this year. I don't know if we'll see. You know, Derek Carr was was good for a, a decent chunk of last year, but then we saw the really bad Derek Carr kind of come out um, in, in some key spots. And so, yeah, I really think if you're looking for a year where we finally teeter towards reality in terms of a quarterback change, I think it might be this year. So outside the division, they have to play the Colts. All, let's see, I'll, I should go in, I guess, actual order of the schedule. I mean, week one, the Ravens at home on Monday night, that is not a free win. That's, you know, they're, they're seven-point dogs with the Raiders at home. I mean, the Ravens at home, excuse me. Then they're at the Steelers in week two. They get the Dolphins in week three, at Chargers in week four, Bears in week five, at Broncos in week six, and the Eagles in week seven. I mean, n- no disrespect to you, but the Eagles are probably the worst team they're going to play on that list. And – I don't see three wins there. So I think they're coming out of a week eight bye with two wins, maybe three best case. And then they, they're at the Giants. That's all the way across the board. We've seen them lose in MetLife Stadium plenty of times. We haven't even played the Chiefs once here. They're at the Cowboys later. They have, do have the Bengals in Washington. So those are two potential wins. I just think that I think they go under. I think it's a five or six win team, even with a 17 game schedule. That would be the only bet I would make on, on the Raiders. So just, I can't have faith with them. And, their win total would probably tick down a half a half a game, maybe, if Aaron Rodgers was traded into the division. The Chargers, I'm kind of surprised they're behind the the Broncos, but I understand the concern of Vegas not wanting to get torched by again the Rodgers trade and people leap on it. I I like the Chargers at six to one to win the division. To be perfectly honest, I think this is a team that's a little live there. Their win total is nine. AFC odds eighteen to one. Super Bowl odds thirty five to one. Their top additions in the draft and free agency, in my opinion, were on the offensive line with Matthew Slater and Corey Lindsley. And I thought they did a great job adjusting uh, adjusting to some losses early on in free agency and came away with a unit that's very strong and very impressive. Brian Belago on the right side. you got to protect Justin Herbert. I think Brandon Staley is a big upgrade in, in terms of the coaching staff. And if this defense does anything like the Rams defense did last year, I think the Chargers are live to win the Super Bowl. Wow, there we go. I, you know, and honestly, I don't want to be just a, uh, you know, an echo here, but I, I think the Chargers. Yeah, when you look at the odds, it's very clear that they do belong above the Broncos. It's just that you know, it's the Aaron Rodgers factor there. That's plain and simple what it is. But yeah, I mean, they've got, they've got all the foundational pieces you're looking for. You've got the young quarterback who can, who can throw it with anyone. Um, you've got an offensive line that they properly addressed with Rayshon Slater there, Corey Lindsay. I mean, you mentioned them. There's two. Bonafide. I mean, they're Pro Bowl caliber starters if they, you know, max out. And so you've got him better protected. You've got guys coming back that weren't healthy last year, like Austin Eckler. I mean, if he benefits from some positive, you know, injury regression kind of there, I think that the Chargers, yeah. I mean, defensively, you, you look up and down the board, Asante Samuel Jr. Um, I think, you know, they've, they've added some real exciting pieces. Um, and I think, yeah, if you're looking for a clear cut, second place finisher or somebody that could actually challenge the chiefs. I think it is the chargers. Their schedule is kind of interesting at Washington week one, Dallas in week two at the chiefs in week three and the Raiders in week four. If they came out one and three there, I'd be pretty surprised, but not entirely shocked. 
it wouldn't also wouldn't surprise me if they were four and zero after that stretch. And then you get Cleveland and Baltimore before your week seven by New England, Philly, Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Denver. I mean, these are these are tougher schedules. So I understand why the numbers are maybe a little tampered down in this division, just because you have to play those AFC North teams. But they get the Texans late. Um, you know, the Raiders, the final week of the season on the road, they get the Giants. This looks like a 10 win team to me, minimum. And so I, I'm, oh, I guess I'm back on board with the Chargers bandwagon. I'm sure. What could, what could possibly go wrong here? Backing the Chargers to be really good. I would have no problem. And look, I don't, I don't think that they're going to win the division. I think the Chiefs will probably win the division. But at six to one, that's pretty good value to me. And that's a, you know, that's, you see, I mean, you know, that's that's just something a couple weird things have to happen and everything has to click. Not, not everything has to click right for you to come away with that division title. And we have expanded playoffs. So I, I really like the Chargers at six to one to win the division. And I would splash on them at 35 to one to win the Super Bowl and 18 to one. And I like they're over. I just think they did a good job with it. Now, if injuries happen to their pass rush and injuries happen to their wide receivers, they're not necessarily deep in those two spots. And it could get a little dicey for them. But they're they're really they have one of the better rosters in football, uh, certainly one of the better rosters in the AFC, and I, I think they're. I think they're a, just. I just think they're a good team. That's a smart coaching staff away from maybe taking a leap here. Yeah, and I think their floor with Justin Herbert at quarterback and a coaching staff that is not run by the previous regime, um, that game day management stuff. I mean, your floor just with those two things: a staff that can handled game day situations and Justin Herbert at quarterback, you know, throw in the offensive line improvements. I think the floor is already, is already way higher. And, and honestly, when, when we went through and did head coaching grades and stuff, I mean, Brandon Staley was actually lower on my list just because the experience coming in, I mean, it's, it's not huge. I mean, he, he's not, he's not coming in with a vast resume, but like you said, if he brings a, a shade of, of what happened in Los Angeles uh, with the Rams, you know, he's got the talent to do it. And so, again, all you have to do is, is not do, and we don't mean to, I guess, throw Anthony Lynn under the bus, but basically there were so many situations where the Chargers were, were capable of being a better team. And as long as you're, you're hitting those, um, you know, they're going to be in contention. I mean, I count seven losses by one score, including two in overtime, one to the Chiefs and one to the Saints, Saints on the road, in their first 10 weeks last year. That's deflating, you know, for your morale too. I mean, you talk sure. about if you if you hit on half of those, you know, you're probably going in a little more spirited to the second half of the year. Absolutely. Now, worth worth noting, they had several wins, including um, let's say, I think they had four or five wins, including one in overtime against at the Raiders last year by one score. This is a team that just didn't was just always involved in a close game at the end, and it was how. What fascinating way will they find to lose this in this close game? Yeah. And it, it, that makes it tough. But I, I just feel like Brandon Steele is going to be more organized, going to be more prepared, and could be wrong. He could show up, and, and he's not ready for in these in-game situations. And you're right. There isn't experience there. But I'm willing to trust him. Or I'm willing to trust basically anybody that's not anti Lynn. So yeah. for me, the Chargers are a good value just because they're being inflated a little bit right now with that Aaron Rodgers buzz. And if he doesn't get traded, their numbers probably come down. And the Chiefs numbers probably come down too. Uh, let's talk about the Denver Broncos after the break. So Denver still rumored to get Aaron Rodgers, which is why they have no win total on the board. Their AFC odds are 10 to 1, and their Super Bowl odds are 20 to 1. You know, their top draft picks, Patrick Sertain and Javante Williams, really nice players. Love, love their additions. They also brought in Kyle Fuller. They tagged Justin Simmons, traded for Teddy Bridgewater. They built a lot of things in place that I, I think were if they did trade for Aaron Rodgers, they would suddenly be the the, the pick du jour, Cody, of, of people who want to sort of have a quasi sleeper to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it'd be this, uh, it'd be interesting to compare, you know, their, their roster when they got Peyton Manning. Uh, obviously, that was, that was the transition, speaking of Tim Tebow, transition from the Tim Tebow Broncos to Peyton Manning. Right. And uh, obviously, that, you know, that changed things pretty quickly for Denver. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this all hinges on the quarterback. I think that, you know, Vic Fangio, you'd think he's kind of in a make or break kind of a season and obviously he got some some pieces for his preferred side of the ball defense they've got you know they invested not only Patrick Sertan they also signed Ronald Darby this offseason I mean they, they've stocked up at corner you mentioned Kyle Fuller 
Um, so the defense, there's promising pieces. You got Von Miller coming back healthy. Um, but it comes down to quarterback. Yeah, I mean, if it's I think adding Teddy Bridgewater, you know, that obviously at the least it raises your floor because he's he's been a, you know, he's been more of a, a good, solid, not great quarterback for his career. Um, you know, he's obviously been more steady, at least in terms of uh, controlling the football than Drew Locke was last year. But it, it, let's say Teddy, you know, raises the floor. If Drew Locke outshines him at some point, you know, your ceiling's probably a little higher. But neither of those guys, I don't think, is getting you beyond wild card contention, at least in my opinion. And so unless they've got an Aaron Rodgers blockbuster up their sleeve, you know, that's kind of where I see them at, kind of on that fringe playoff uh, status. And, and look, Vic Fangio's had some in-game coaching issues too. You know, we rip Anthony Lynn yeah. for it. There's a, a lot of weird situations that have unfolded with that Denver Broncos team where you just can't even understand how they're losing some of these games. I, I do think that when you look at their roster, it's easy to like this team. I mean, they're loaded at the skill positions, good enough offensive line. Certainly the Juwan James injury in, in the cut, and that'll be a hot topic all offseason, is a dagger, and Bobby Massey ain't in it right tackle. So they've got to figure that out, and that's something to watch. But they have plenty of – I mean, again, the skill positions are, are stacked. If Drew Locke takes a leap, this is a playoff team. And there's no question that the defense is much better. Kyle Fuller arrived and got his original big contract in Vic Fangio's system. Justin Simmons continues to blossom as they continue to tag him. And I still think Bradley Chubb hadn't really flashed his true potential. Von Miller coming back in a year where he's trying to maybe get one more bite of the apple. This is, this is the team where if Locke takes a step or they trade for Aaron Rodgers, it's – you, I mean, they're they're going to be good. The problem for me, Cody, is that I can't back him at this price. Nobody can back him at this price. Yeah. You're paying uh, Aaron Rod unless you know Aaron Rodgers is getting traded. Even then, you're paying a premium, twenty yeah. to one to win the Super Bowl. That's it's it's way too low. This is not a team that's winning the Super Bowl without Aaron Rodgers. It's not a team that's winning the AFC without Aaron Rodgers. I would almost rather back them to make the playoffs. Yes, after Rodgers isn't traded there. Or maybe take the win total over seven and a half after Rodgers is not traded there. I think any amount of betting, from a betting perspective, the value is gone. You had to get yeah. it in when the rumor started. At this point, I'm just not sure there's an actionable move taken here. I th yeah, I think you're absolutely right. The, the better play is almost because it's going to skyrocket. I mean, if they do get Aaron Rodgers, yeah, I mean, that's going to be the buzz for, for weeks all the way up until the season starts. I mean, people will be piling on that. So, yeah, I think the better option is kind of banking on that Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke contingent to to take them to the playoffs um, and be a surprise team. Now, are we underselling? I, I don't want to say underselling Teddy Bridgewater, but we're talking about Drew Locke's upside. Um, and I think Teddy Bridgewater, you know, he proved in Carolina, he proved in Minnesota, you know, before the, the catastrophic injury. He was, you know, he's fine. He's a fine quarterback. And, and I don't think that he's necessarily much more than that. But we saw in New Orleans where he actually did have a supporting cast and filled in for Drew Brees. I mean, the record looked pretty good and the stats looked pretty good because he had the supporting cast. Is Denver that much of an upgrade skill wise uh, from Carolina yeah. that you could see maybe we're underselling him a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I, I just think with Locke, I like the combo of Locke and Bridgewater because yeah. – Locke gives you that upside where if he hits, like, oh man, like Drew Locke might have been awesome. Like he's got he's got the skill. And then if it if it doesn't work out, like, eh, let's go to Teddy and let's just let's run the ball. Let's let him make short plays. I, the the one problem I would have is that I just don't know that I buy into the Teddy thing without Sean Payton. Because it just didn't work yeah. with Joe Brady. And uh, you know, so like you take Teddy out of New Orleans. And he's been, he was fine in Minnesota. Um, I, maybe it can work with Pat Shermer. We'll, I, we'll see. I don't, I don't mind Teddy. I just don't think you're going to go with Teddy. Yeah, exactly. I don't think – yeah. You yeah. definitely shouldn't be betting on that. Yeah, you don't want to bet on the Broncos right now without, without Aaron Rodgers coming. And then, right. again, we said, the value is probably all, all the way sucked out. I actually think that the Chiefs value is kind of interesting – not in the sense from the you know winning the Super Bowl at plus five twenty five. That's that's a tough look. Or even the AFC at plus two sixty because there are you know there are just there's a it's a long season. There are, there are plenty of good teams in the AFC, and that is a I mean that is that's just an expensive price to pay for a single NFL team. Even though the 
the Chiefs have been right there for three straight years ever since Patrick Mahomes took over. They're over under total 12, over minus 140. And if I was saying top draft edition, I want to say Orlando Brown, who they they tra- they 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 drafted Cody via trade, yep. and then their top free agents, Joe Tooney and Kyle Long. In other words, they reworked that offensive line because they wanted to make sure that this that Patrick Mahomes would be protected after he just got obliterated in the Super Bowl. Yeah, and they also drafted Creed Humphrey, who can play up front. I mean, it's it was a total. I mean, it couldn't be more obvious. They saw what happened in the Super Bowl. They decided that was going to be the thing they could fix, and they could afford to do that because you look up and down the rest of their roster, and they—I mean—they've still got the most talent in the NFL in terms of, you know, the peak players at each position. You got Travis Kelsey, you got Tyree Kill across the ball, Tyron Matthew. I mean, the roster is still a Super Bowl caliber roster, so they could afford to pour into one. You know, you could you could nitpick about the depth that at wide receiver. Obviously, Sammy Watkins went elsewhere. Um, you know, they sniffed around Juju Smith Schuster, but I mean, it's still at the end of the day, you know, Patrick Mahomes is there. Andy Reid is there. It's the chiefs. And you can't say that for every team, every contender each year, but you can about the chiefs. And so, um, yeah, it's just a matter of whether you're willing to bet on another 12 win plus season for Andy Reid. And he's done it, you know, since before they were in that AFC championship and Super Bowl. Yeah. I have no problem betting this over. John Breach brought it up on CBS sports HQ is, his favorite bet, and they should win 13 games. If it's, you know, I understand if Rodgers comes over, then maybe you're worried they don't win as many. But if the Broncos are decent and the Chargers are good and the Raiders are semi competent, the Chiefs are going to have to win these games to keep pace. The Buffalo Bills look, look like they're going to be great again. The Chiefs are going to want that number one seed. You know, they're yeah. going to, they're going to be pushing to win those games. So I don't think that we see the Chiefs come away with 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 a 17-game schedule with less than 12 wins. So as long as it wasn't 12 and a half, I'd be okay with it. It's a huge number. It's tough to lay that. But it's really more like 10 and a half or 11, maybe 11 and a half yeah. as if it's minus 140. And you get that extra game this year. And there's going to be AFC. The, the, it, the Chiefs are just not going to win this the AFC by three games. And if they do, it means they probably got to 13 wins early on and maybe lost two or, two or three down the stretch. The, the, the easiest way to look at it is there's one more game on the schedule, which means there's a good chance there's one more win on the Chiefs total. So Correct. just bet it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, the AFC, I would say if you are, if you're able to parlay it or if you're willing to lay juice, and the problem with laying minus 280, which is the price for the division, is you, you know, if you want to win $100, you have to lay down $280. So if you want to win, you know, five hundred dollars. You're you're putting you're giving somebody a thousand dollars to hold for what amounts to nine months. But as much as I like, I like I, I don't. If you can find if you if your book allows you to parlay division odds, I think the Chiefs at minus two eighty are actually pretty good. They should be something like minus four hundred. But because of that Rogers news, they've been they shrunk a little bit. And if Rogers doesn't get traded there, they'll go back to three fifty or four hundred. So. If you could get that in now at minus two eighty, I do think that is good value. Even though I also like the Chargers, you're like I don't, I don't yeah. want to lay the two eighty. I just think that price is not correct. And also consider, even if Rodgers goes to Denver, and we like his skill positions there, take the package of: Are you taking Aaron Rodgers on a new team with Vic Fangio and Pat Shermer, or are you taking Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? I mean, you have to look at the whole package there, and I think. You know, you look up and down the Chiefs roster, you're probably still favoring them. I think, yeah, they're, they're still, you know, regardless of the hype that comes with, with Rodgers, if he goes there, Kansas City is your, is your play. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's it. That was, that, was, that was fast. We did the AFC West. The AFC West is kind of cut and dry, and it's not – well, it's, it's cut and dry in the sense that you, you don't – It's not boring. That. It's not boring either, though, oh. because you got Justin Herbert coming up. You got, you know, John Gruden drama, I'm sure, this year. Denver. I mean, yeah, it's not boring. It's just uh, you're just you're not going to find much value in. Even though I listed two teams, I would bet on to win the division. You're just not going to find like much value in betting on the division right now because we don't know what the deal is with Aaron Rodgers, and we're not going to know for several months. And unless he's traded to the Broncos, um, and if he is, you know, before this, obviously we'll do a, a mercy podcast. It's just tough because Denver is that's the storyline around Denver, and until we know about that, this division nothing changes and. If he's not traded, then it's the Chiefs in a runaway. The Raiders are sort of the team we don't like. And if he is traded, then it's a situation where, you know, maybe you, you know, maybe you, maybe there's maybe there's nothing to like unless you're a huge Chargers guy like 
me. All uh, all right. Good stuff. Make sure and uh, we'll have Cody back later on to talk about the NFC North, so make sure to check that out. Thanks for subscribing, rating, reviewing. Cody, as always, a pleasure.